in here has been in love? Who in here has been playing a character being in love? Who in here wants to do it again? Yes. <laughs> That's very good. Then uh, this is definitely the talk for you. <laughs> because uh, we're going to walk through a lot of experiences that we've had with playing in love. We're going to walk through a lot of good ideas. We're going to try and make it as <coughs> positive as possible, as motivating as possible, trying to focus on what you should do instead of what you shouldn't do. Um, yeah, but that's just going to, to go to start. So for me, love is like oxygen. This is the reason we are alive. It's to get through to the meaningful stuff, not all the engineering, not all the biology, not all the actual physical stuff. It's the poetry, the emotions, the waking Garga while he's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's dreaming as Garga is doing right now. <laughs> Next time. I am hyped about romance. Aren't you? I'm so happy. I'm just as hyped as Sophie right there. And then when I saw the pictures, like this was perfect. Because this is really the thing where you're like, yeah, we want to play romance. Because love can be so much more. There's nothing wrong with us money petting. I really like it. But there's other ways as well. And if you think that it's terrifying to look someone deeply in the eye and pet with them, you can give them some neck massage. Next one. You can describe to them how much you want to be with them. You can, um, you can make a drawing, you can make a poem. You don't even have to meet the person you're playing in love with to make it a meaningful relation. Next one. Um, you can use glitter stick or lipstick. And glitter in general, there are so many things that you can do to overplay, to overhype, to overdo your love. Especially in art, it's very, very good to use cliches and do things over the top. Because that makes it much more clear what you're, what you're trying to do, what your intentions are, what you're looking for, and that it is most likely safe because you're just looking to have a fun time with love. You're trying to have a good experience. You're not trying to abuse and misuse. You're just trying to be the loving person that pride with this thing, uh, with glimmer lifting on. Next one. But if you want to play love, training does matter. You can definitely do it better, do it more, and you can listen to our talk and get even more <coughs> ideas and a better mindset to play in love. But most importantly, it's just go out and do it. Go out and try. You will make mistakes. You will offend someone. You will do missteps. But we do it all the time when we learn. It's part of what makes it interesting. Next one. Just go out there and get a kickstart. Get a lot of ideas on how to do it. Research a little bit. And try to bring maybe some, some poems into the art that you just tell yourself, I'm going to tell someone this poem. Use it as a tool to just get started. Don't think about who it should be, just I need to tell someone a poem, and then you're already on your road for romance. Next one. And I can't specify enough how important cliches are. Because cliches, they are cliches for a reason. They are cliches because they work. They are cliches because people know what they are, and it becomes much easier to play and make clear what your intentions are if you use cliches. And it's much easier to, for your co-players to have fun about it. If you come blasting through the door into the classroom and be like, I love you, then everybody knows what's going on because you're using the cliche of the high school love where you would do, you would do anything to prove how much you love one person. And this is what I can really recommend you to do these things, even though they can be anxiety provoking. When you've done them, in real life or in LARP, you become accelerated and you can really move the distance. Next one. You can come in with flowers and poetry. It's the best tools. It's very simple. It's the shade. It, it makes things 
run much more smoothly. Next one. But love can also be tender. It can be slowly built upwards. It can be long gazes, the looks through the mirrors, initiating contact with someone in the room, or maybe more than one, depending on what you're into. <coughs> Next one. And do leave breadcrumbs. Just like Hansel and Greta, leave breadcrumbs to show that you have intentions of playing in love. You can do it before the LARP, write on a Facebook group and say, I'm looking for romance. You can do it in the LARP and leave uh, love letters or um, flowers or other stuff that people can say, okay, this is, I know where this is going. It's, there's clarity <coughs> in what the intended play is supposed to be. Next one. And you can leave these breadcrumbs to invite to play. And it can be more than just one-to-one -one -one romance. It can also be breadcrumbs to tell other players, we are having an affair, do something about it, play with it. It's about exposing the secrets of a love affair. It's about making clear for the rest of the players, for your co-players, this is an interesting plot. Come and join us. Come and join our story. Because you can always include more people in a love story. It only makes it more real. It only creates more tension when the father doesn't approve of it, but the mother thinks of her youth where she was in the same situation and she wants to help you actually break the circle and marry someone you love. Next one. Signal what you want. This is a perfect example where it, uh, I think it's the 7-Eleven coffee where they have the coffee mug that says single. It's a perfect way to say it. I want to get, to get more romance, or I'm looking for this. You can use it in any context, it doesn't have to be just romance. But the more you make clear what kind of play you're looking for, the more easy it is for your co-players to play with you. Next one. But obviously also be considerate. In many ways, and we don't have that time, so I can't explain how in detail this is, but be considerate. And it's also a way to show your affection to someone. Notice them. Notice what they like or what their character are more specifically like. So you can play on it. Next one. Help them up if they've fallen down. Reach out for them. And also, you know, if there's someone stretches out for you, grab that hand. See where it leads. Next one. And find out, find out what, what the person like. And give them that. Because this is the perfect way. Like Klaus, he loves ice cream. If you bring him some ice cream doing a lot, he'll be like, oh, this is really nice. <laughs> you've seen me, you've recognized me, both as a person, but also as something potentially more. <clears throat> and it's the, it's the perfect way to do love, relaxing, or love relations. Use these things. Next one. And there is love for everyone. Even uh, Jamie here is a fairy. <laughs> or maybe someone looking for a fairy. So. You can always find someone who would be interested in that kind of play. And it has so much potential to including more people, to be for everyone in all, all the senses of the word. Because love is not rational. Love, it breaks the whole idea of, oh, I should find the perfect match and we should have a house. Like, that's not what love is about. Love is about breaking those boundaries, breaking those rules, and just going with it. Next one. And safe is sexy. Next one. Sometimes you can just stick to a neck massage if you want to show affection. And obviously also go further, but it's important to communicate what you want to do in a safe and respectful manner and also in a way where the person that you're playing with can up in and up out. And there's many ways to do it and that's something that Yep and Maria will also get more into details with. And this is obviously a, an awesome picture of me and Alien back when we did the sex workshop, so I had to include it somehow. Next one. Use break words. Don't, don't fall into the crocodile. It's, it's not nice. Say, slow down, cut, stop. This is not what I want to do. Communicate with your, your co-players if it's too much. Be honest, be brave. Next one. But also jump into it. Jump into the love, jump into the pool of play and romance. 
You might get burned, but that is how we grow, that is how we learn, that is how we evolve. Next one. Because we can all make mistakes. But the important thing is, next one, to get back up on the horse. To do again and again and again until we get it right. That's why we get, most of you in this room probably have a couple of boyfriends or girlfriends or maybe both to try and find out what is it I'm looking for, what is it that, I'm, that I like to do, what is it that I'm looking for another person and in myself with someone else. And this is the same journey that you can do in LARP. Try out different types of relations, explore the possibilities because it will make you grow, it will make you a better lover, a romantic. Next one. Which brings us to the epic level romance. Next one. <coughs> After you've beaten the first level boss, you've been to the LARP, you brought someone some poetry, you recited it. Obviously there's more things to do. Next one. You can try and uh, overcome new, new difficulties, new challenges. Set a high bar that say that I should make my own poetry and recite to someone. Or I should, I don't know, do have five romantic relations running at the same time. Challenge yourself to what you can do. Next one. Pull in the entire family. <coughs> Include more players in your love play. That is the next thing. Like One thing, first find someone that you can do some romantic play with. And then, how can you include the rest of the players in the room? How? Because that's what makes it so much better, so much more real. Because in the real world, when someone loves each other, people notice. But the only way to notice is if you actively include them. Next one. You can also create awkward situations. My favorite <coughs> romance scenes are always awkward. The one where I'm I have to tell my girlfriend that I made another girl pregnant and she just went into a feminist workshop and she just went out and I sort of, maybe it didn't make sense in reality to say it at this point, but in the play it made perfect sense that I needed to tell her now. She did went out and obviously my character is very nervous. I have this, this beer and I'm trembling and I'm like, do you want a beer? And she's like, uh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon. No, it's not really the same. Well, I could definitely do with a beer and then typically you open the beer and try to, to, to drink a little bit of it. And, and really have this long, awkward pause before coming to the realization, I really like you. I really like us. And have this long, drawn out scene that was so horrible and awkward. At some point comes the realization, something is wrong. And then I tell her, I made another girl pregnant. And she stormed away. Coming back two minutes later, throwing a present that I gave her early in life, uh, in the log, in my face. Those scenes are amazing. And they are something that other people can react to and be included in. Make it visible, make it visceral, make it big. Next one. Conflict, conflict, conflict. I mean, this is Nordic Live after all. This is what we're going for. This, we want the tears, we want the conflicts, we want to create relations, we want to create relationships that are broken, that fucks up, that gives us something we can react to, something we can play around, something that can teach us how it is to be alive. Next one. Oh yeah, yeah I think we're yeah. <laughs> Make plans for the start. <laughs> Don't go over time. Next one. <laughs> Plan what you want to do to conquer the world, where you want to go. Next one. Jealousy creates play. Next one. <laughs> but love isn't rational. And that is my main point. You can always go beyond and do silly stuff. You can always invent a new love release. You can always do something completely out of the blue. Because that is how love is most realistic. So never stick to convention. Never say, oh, I have this relation described in my character. I can only react to that person. Use it as a tool to go and explore new things in the lot. Next one. Because being crazy in love creates storm experiences. This is my and my ex-girlfriend. We played together at Delirium. It was the most crazy, insane, insane asylum experience that I've ever, 
ever been a part of. And that, after that, I had to do more. I had to expand upon it. I had to get to the next level. It gave me so much as a human being. It taught me so much about so many things. And you should do the same. Thank you. Now it's time for you. Thank you, Josh. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit in depth about them. some of the things Charles talked about also. Like it's, this is about getting to that moment. So this is what happens all before, like sort of getting to, to this great romantic scene or whatever it is we're looking for. This is, I'm talking out from like a games where you have time to prepare. Like you're going to some lab and you have a character, you know, you get a character and you have time to talk with people beforehand. It's not like a, come and just play for a few hours and you don't know what you get, but, but this is uh, when you have time before. So I do some things to prepare uh, my game to make sure I get sort of the game I want. Uh, and it has taught me some things that are good ideas and some things that are bad ideas. Uh, I often like, we start on Facebook. Uh, it's, it's, it's reaching out to people there uh, that you know you're going to play with. It's like, it's not like that's not rocket science, but uh, I usually start there and find the people I'm going to play with. Either it could be you, know, you get cast into a relation, or uh, you want to find somebody, and then yeah, I usually I usually see people out there and try to to communicate with them before. And I use that to like either it could be like two, we're two strangers we're cast to play together, uh, and we don't really know each other. We need to build trust, like before the game. So I guess we're both like worried that the, might, the other one might think you know. She or he might think that I'm some sort of creep, you know, uh, like that I'm that I have uh, like uh, other motivations than just getting a great experience at the lab with the person. So I use like the time beforehand to just talk and getting to know the person, uh, but also to talk about like what, what do we want from this game, what is our limitations, and and yeah, uh, what 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 are we hoping for in the game. Uh, I have like a, yeah, Charles uh, used this in, uh, in his article as well. I call it by the Baron Humming model for romance. So it's like when trying to build, if I'm building the relation myself, I, I use this as like a guideline that, that romance consists of dream and resistance. Uh, and to just explain that a bit, it's like to have like, to get like a strong romantic connection, you need like something that you're, you have out there in the future that you like, that you're aiming for, something that should come true. It's a lot, a lot easier to build the relation if we're like talking about like, when, like when we uh, finally get to marry and you know be together or whatever the dream may be, it may also be a place. I often use that, like talking about like <coughs> the home we'll build together or the place we will settle down or like or finding that in the game, like the actual place. It it makes it easier to like to have a common. Uh, it's just easier to have a strong relationship. You have a common goal, and you don't actually need to like each other. You like just work towards the the goal, and you also need resistance. Uh, it's it's not it's not two player sports. If you just like. Oh yeah, like uh, I'm in love with Charles. Charles is in love with me. Hey, great, let's get married. Scenario's over. <laughs> and uh, and so I, I try to find people who can be my resistance, like parents or cousins or whoever, like people who can dislike this uh, yeah this connection. <laughs> and uh, then I use like if we call it the the bungee method. It's like uh, if we can agree with the, the person or the person we're playing with that we have like this sort of like rubber band connection, you know, if we if we get too close, we should push away, like they do in Greece, like, uh, finally, like, they're sorting things out, and then he fucks it up again, uh, Danny, or, like, if we get too far from each other, then we have, like, a, a common commitment to, like, turn this around and get back together, and that works very well to, like, create the dynamics if we both agree on this this uh, way of doing it. It also needs a bit of insecurity. I have bad experiences with, like, deciding everything up front. It's a good idea to agree, is this a, like, is this a tragedy? sort of feel we're aiming for, but not to decide everything in detail. Uh, and then there is something about getting the timing right. That's uh, <laughs> important. <laughs> it's not getting it right. Uh, you need to, uh, yeah, I, I'll stop the cat. <laughs> uh, like, sometimes the, the, the whole relate, like you have planned a ton of things and it goes wrong because you don't make sure to actually meet like, what will trigger this relation. And then you end up happening too late and you don't have time to evolve the relation. So, uh, so I talk with people about that as well. I get it one more time. <laughs> and then I do some, like, uh, if I bring stuff, also if I don't have planned a relation already, like, but I want this in the game, it's sort of like Charles said, like, to make sure to have, like, the gear you need. Uh, and then before the scenario, you could, like, write letters, you could play memory scenes of when we met, if it's an existing relation. And yeah, spot the good locations, like, take a look at the 
then you're placing at where could be like good romantic spots. Where do you want to propose, yeah. right? <laughs> then like it's also about like fit out what you like do good. Like is it is it, am I good at singing what you said? But if not, then perhaps do something you feel more safe with. Um, but just like belonging looks, so yeah, uh, dancing, poetry, whatever whatever you're good at. Or you can be bad at it, like Charles said, and uh, yeah, have like awkward situations. But yeah, just really do something. It'll it'll be it'll be fun and it'll be cool. Uh, I cheat a lot, like I steal uh, from others, uh, poetry, songs. I, I sometimes like I, I have to do like a kind of song that I know very well that I sort of want to use in the relationship, and then I can perhaps translate the lyrics, but I remember them like because I know the song well, and I can use them in the game, like sort of like have themes to go back to. It's easier if it's a song for me at least to remember what like what I want to say, so it gets a more dramatic feel than just me saying like Oh Charles, I really like you. Uh, then sometimes you know, like you talk a lot and you meet each other, and the chemistry is wrong. Like it feels like I'm, I'm unsure or like unsafe with this. And like I've had, you know, in these situations, I just like try to talk with the other person a lot again, because like most people are fascinating and fun to play with if you just like give it time. And and of course it's okay to like back away, and, like just be honest to the other one if you, you can't see it happen and tell it. But but also give it a chance and give it some time, and keep on talking during the lap, like. We usually like I usually agree with people to check in like a couple of times. It's a long, you know, like four, two days, three days to have like a couple of check-ins all out of the game to just like, are we happy? Is everything going well? And we always have fun. Like it's it's even when we cry, it's about, it's about having fun in some way. Oh. Yes, then it's me. And uh, the total re and the reason why we did this challenge and I it's because we were wondering. Why don't people play more romance? Why don't guys sign up for the romantic club? Why is it only girl? And it's because of the anxiety. Nobody wants to feel like Saturday evening very late in like in the real world. So I often have been to a lot as a girl, thinking I want to play romance, but nobody has designed romance plots, especially me some of the main, main designers and so on. So I've created a lot of experiences in what do you do when you want to play a romance, but you didn't get the romance relationship in forehand. You didn't have time to connect with the person due to perhaps you couldn't find them on Facebook. So your mind tips and tricks are starting. You are at the love. And now you decide this is what I'm aiming for. This is what we do. So, cold canvas romance. This is, you are selling the idea of a great experience of love to another person through the love. Yes. So, this is what I'm saying. I didn't have it. Uh, or, I'm just aiming to find in. This is like, uh, next. So, I have to. I have some obligation because this is my goal for the love experience. I have to create a trusty feeling when Yeva he in the uh, beforehand could contact people through Facebook and write with them. I have to do it on the way and uh, connect with people. And I also have to create, has the responsibility to create the dream and the resistance as well because it, this is my invitation to <coughs> another person. Yes. And so what do I do? I I have to invite somebody to play this and they have to opt in. So I overplay my romantic situation. Sometimes it feels corny, but if you do it twice as much as you I think we tend to play like in the movies. This is very subtle. He can see it. Really and he, he really can. And then he's having this anxiety. Shit, this is like Sunday night or a Saturday night. Nah, nah, nah. Is this shit? Do she want to play with me or do she not? So, overdo it. Because then he or she would truly have the feeling, oh, there might be something there. Overplay it. Don't be realistic in that situation. And I 
really have to show that this is one on one because my enthusiasm will you know it's like a it's like a flu but it's a last flu so it will be pushed on and when he smiles at me because he sees my invitation please give him some feedback yes you're doing it right i reached out for you i wish you would have taken my whole hand but you're touching my fingers and then i show really joyful excitement because he touched my fingers yes <laughs> so show it so this is the communication yes we are building something we want each other we are connecting and I always find something with the other character uh, I can play on and I find attractive and I do that because then I can focus the energy around that and it could be like uh, he has the most soft hands in the world and he touches my fingers. Or his caresses are so sweet. Or his smile is just the most warm smile. Or his, he or her eyes are the most beautiful blue, green, brown eyes in the world. Because then I can build the image of that person being the only one true love for me. And you could hear it, I use clichés, because cliché is there for a reason. This is me trying to meet a signal to the other. This is romance, I'm using romance clichés. So if you're saying yes to this, this is what you're up into. There's no, I'm trying to be so transparent, I can be, even though we are laughing. And if I reached out and he touches my finger, perhaps this is his sign of, yes, you can take my hand. I escalate slowly. I don't go for the kiss as the next thing. Do it slow. Also because we have to make this last for the entire laugh. So we have to stretch it out like the bungee. Yes. Again, show enthusiasm. That can also be involving others. Because if I drag in my family, my best friend, or something like that, in the lab, I'm showing, signalizing to that person, I really want to do this with you. See, these guys I'm playing with, I'm telling them, you are my main focus in this sort of relation. So they will know they should create distance or resistance for us, or something like that. Uh, and uh, this is also a very good way to, if I have invited a girl to play this romance with me and she, through the romance kind of, perhaps it, yeah, it's not me. Then it's perhaps easier for that person to back down if they know that Jeb is playing my big brother and they can go to him and say, well, your kid sister, she's nice, but yeah, because Nobody likes rejection, not in real life, not in loves. So this is the way of opting out nicely and giving people a way to opt out or reinforce it and say, your kid sister is my one true love and then he can signalize to me or help me, this is working. Yes. Oh, next. Uh, so, Erotics. Let's go to in what it's really about. <laughs> yeah, because that's a part of the romance as well. It's not just this, you know, very tight, romantic, pink thingy. It's also the other thing that creates it. And I like to do slow, mo uh, slow motion because then the other person can actually react to it. And it also gives this, this cinematic feel. We are aiming for the Moulin Rouge moment, remember. <laughs> it feels like slow motion moment. And then the person can read us way easier than if I just ran and hugged them fastly. It's, it's creating the trust and keeping the trust. And eye contact is very uh, important, especially because it's intensified the feelings. But it's also a way of mm, communicating and connecting with the other person. So you can 
be honest, we can all see if there's the look of excitement or fear in the eyes of the other person we're playing with, right? Yeah, and so the touch of the hand. Um, and instead of talking, instead of doing all the erotic thoughts and things, I can say, I dream of the day you will take me in your arms and carry me into our wedding bed and all the things you would do with your kissing places we will not discuss when my parents is here. Then we're actually having the erotic thing and we can play around the dream uh, because I have placed it in the future. I have placed it a safe place. And we both know we will not go, uh, come to the wedding day because that is in the future after the love. So this is safe sex in love. <laughs> Just <laughs> yes. So we have been building up, but what about the kiss? <coughs> yes. Yeah. <coughs> uh, because kiss is a part of the romance. It could be on the hand. It could be I'm kissing my own fingers and touching him or her on the cheek. Yeah? Or it could be a real kiss. And yes, because sometimes there is a chemistry. We have been building up, we have been looking in the eyes and so on. And so <coughs> this is where the kiss should be. And I go for it. I'm rude. <laughs> And I'm also into playing love. And, um, but if we also are aware of each other, we can feel how was that. And it's nice to, afterwards, after we are playing scene, take a moment on the side and say, if this is okay. Because then I take the stress out of it. The other person, he or she, will probably, oh, that was a kiss, it was magical. But what did it mean? And I said, this was a kiss, this was magical. Are you okay with it? This was our character kissing. Take that moment, two moments spent of reassuring this was cool. Where do we go from here? It's better than all the stress in the thinking. Then you're not feeling the love, then you're stressing as a player. Yeah. So, when I invite others to play with me, play the romance, I have a lot of responsibilities because this is a roller coaster ride. Emotional roller coaster ride. I drag them along and say, This will be amazing. Come on, take the trip with me. So I both have a big responsibility for myself. What are my limits? What are I'm going to do? How I'm inviting them? The, the love, interest, or interest this. Perhaps there's more. And the people are dragging my families. So on, his first family's player. I have to take care of them, signalize them, this is what we are playing. This is not a murder mystery, this is not political, this is romance. And the, this is what you are opting in or out for. Because I started this, I couldn't talk with this in forehand, so they are sort of hit by my drama <coughs> play. I'm, inviting them on, but it's also me pushing it on them. And it can be a great experience being hit by the drama roller coaster, but you have a responsibility in that. Yeah. So, now, I was pull canvassing. I invite people to do this, we have this great thing, but it's also my responsibility, I think, to debrief afterwards. Because we didn't talk about expectations in forehand like ever he suggested you can do and was clear. So I always so they they don't get any, you know, anxiety or mixed signals. Present myself afterwards and create distance. Because it's so easy to fall in love when you've just been acting in love for two days or two hours or something like that. Make difference afterwards, but share the little war stories, share the thing you had together, talk about the character's experience, put it in and, and be careful about it because it's a lovely experience, treasure it, but then it was the character. You and me are different persons, we shared this, but treasure it, that's why we do it. And 
If I invited a guy or a girl's play romance with them and they opted in, give them some positive feedback, that was stimulating and break the thing they did. Perhaps they did it awesome, perhaps they did it okay, but give positive feedback because that will make them go out and jump into this water of love once again. Yes, I'm in love. I am going to laugh with my real life husband. We may play the same laugh, he may play in an entire different place. And afterwards, I always, when I've played a romance or love interest with somebody, present them for him. Because otherwise it would be this, so her husband was there and I was kissing her in the backyard. The mixed signals, the stress, well, say, this is my husband, yeah, but this is the guy I kissed in the backyard. And he would say, cool, high five. And then we, they would drink beer and joke about the romance they played different places. And then it's about having great experiences, sharing great experiences. It's not about something else. This is about having fun as a lover. Yes, and therefore, be honest. Say, he's totally fine with it. Um, I perhaps, uh, oh, if I was single, I played in love with you. Uh, I'm not in real love with you, but it was great playing with you. Or perhaps, if you feel a little afterwards, be honest about that as well. Say, I'm so still feeling the feelings. I know it was the love, but I'm still feeling the feelings. Because then you can debrief, share more stories on an honest level and try to divide the character and the person. Yes? This is my cheat sheet. This is making up for what I said this. So, make invitations. And remember guys, it's not only, you cannot only invite one if you're going for the cold canvas. You have to try out several. Somebody will say opt, opt in and say yes at some point. Make them feel like Romeo and Juliet. Everybody wants to be like Romeo and Juliet. Who don't? Play them as this most attractive person in the world. The, this person is the, your character's love. Have plan. Make it easy for them to opt in or opt out. If they imagine something and make something up, a dream, say yes to it. Don't say no. That's stressful. Love is, yeah, beautiful, yeah. Uh, use cliches and remember to debrief. <coughs> Afterwards, share like we do because this is more what uh, we want to. We want to say, playing romance is the best. It's all about feeling these feelings and enjoying them together. And it's not dangerous or fearful or uh, intimidating. Yes. Thank you for listening. Yeah.